Uh, she will be at our games this weekend, and the other dignitaries and guests will be introduced through the program. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rohr, for being here tonight. I would also like to welcome the many alumni, family, and friends that may be joining us coast to coast this evening through our live feed and WeTV broadcast. Legacy Night, a way to welcome new Lancers, celebrate our alumni, highlight many key initiatives planned for the year, and finally, to thank key contributors to our program, for if it were not for their active participation, our program would look very different. An important feature of this evening is to hear from a Lancer hockey alumni, and I'm confident once you hear from our guests, you'll get a lived experience perspective of what it means to be a Lancer. The mission of our coaching staff is to create an environment where our players can exceed the expected both on and off the ice. Our student experience is the finest in the country. You'll hear much more about this during the evening and our goal is to win a national championship, but most importantly is to help develop championship people along the way. So what does this mean? Create an environment where our players can exceed the expected both on and off the ice. And what is the player's responsibility in this? What are the expectations placed on the student athlete? We ask these young men to be respectful, proud, yet humble, and to embrace a culture that is built on hard work and relentless determination. Leave this program better than you found it. Contribute to the life of the school, the team, and be a good person in the process. Tonight, you'll hear and see stories of how these young men are doing just that, and this is just the beginning for this group. An academic All-Canadian is a student athlete who achieves an overall grade average of 80% or higher. We have 10 such athletes. Nolan Gardner, Brady Pataki, Mason Cohn, Anthony Stefano, Jaden Fetter, Will Ennis, Olivier Arsenal, Hunter Holmes, Brady Hins, and Sean Olson. Through the efforts of advisor Chris O'Gorman, our Lancer men's team, have guidance when selecting all courses. Tutors are provided for our players when needed. Study rooms are provided when we travel to ensure a quiet space where players can do some work. The school community of professors have been extremely supportive and provide academic accommodations when there are conflicts with exams and games. After all, he is the student's first and it's essential that all players understand that excelling in the classroom is a commitment he makes to the teammates when he decides to attend our school. Academics first. Exceed the expected on the ice. The OUA is considered by many the most competitive youth sports league in the country. The parity is real, and we've had as many as 12 of our 22 games last year decided by one goal. 
This challenges coaches and players alike to be at their best for every game and simply put, makes you better. Our program has made the most or has made the postseason for 14 consecutive years. No other school in the province can say that. This is truly remarkable as we know that if you're in the postseason, you give yourself a chance to win every year. And we've been able to do that here at the University of Windsor. In the past decade, only two teams in our conference have won more games than our Lancers men hockey team. We've been to the national tournament twice in recent years and in 2014 won the Queen's Cup. Only one team will win the national championship this year. We'll do whatever we can to ensure we are in the hunt. There are very few guarantees. I can't stand here today and guarantee winning our last game. But here's what I can guarantee. We'll make the University of Windsor proud of our efforts, both on and off the ice. And in the process, we'll be in relentless pursuit of that national championship. The byproduct of this is the personal development of our student athletes. We'll develop championship people along the way, and in turn, it will help grow a culture that we know is healthy for the school and, of course, for the people who attend it. An incredible student experience at Windsor is unique. What does this look like today? Well, when Junior B and Junior C teams are bringing their players to the Caribbean over the holidays, wealthy team owners are providing Junior A players with every possible trinket available. It's impossible for a U Sport program to keep pace with that. We do our best to make sure our players have everything they need to reach their goals and that of the team. Believe me, there has to be a planned and focused fundraising campaign each and every year to address this. Our philosophy is quite simple. Recruit good people who are talented hockey players that are selfless yet driven student athletes who will buy into our culture. There are many programs that have bigger names than we do. Perhaps more elaborate arena facilities, but this alone won't guarantee national championships either. I can't stand here tonight and tell you that all things we do are better than other programs. I will objectively compare every aspect of our program to the elite schools in this country all day long and feel com or comfortable in the knowledge that we, we are providing our players with all the things they need to exceed the expected. There isn't a program who will be more prepared than ours. There isn't a program whose players will outcompete out or outwork this one. It just won't happen. So you ask, why are our graduates successful in industry or the professional hockey route? I think the answer is quite simple. They are familiar with the earn what you get environment and the humble yet relentless pursuit of their goals make them a more complete prospect for any company or team. This is what our student experience looks like this year. The University of Windsor is, is the only school in the country that has four professional teams within 20 minutes of its campus. We take advantage of that by going to games, game day skates, and team outings that are most memorable. Our close proximity to major U.S. schools allows us to put them on our schedule every year. A long-standing tradition here at Windsor is to play elite U.S. schools. We played the University of Michigan this year and have a list of U.S. teams wanting to play us again next year. We played across North America from Alaska to Harvard to Denver to Mercyhurst. Too many others to cite. Our Lancer Hockey Alumni and Friends Golf Tournament is an important piece to our alumni puzzle. This year's tournament did not disappoint as we had over 140 golfers participate. A testament to our alumni, being active and Lancers from all generations wanting to reunite and celebrate the past with the present, leading to a discussion on how they can be a vibrant part of our future. We have a special day planned this year for Saturday, December 3rd, where we host Toronto Metro University at 80 Knox. The alumni will play a game at 4 p.m. and we'll play at 7.30. 
For many of our alumni, they haven't played hockey since they last played at 80 Knox Arena. So it should be a great night for everybody. If there are alumni tuning in and want to participate, please contact me directly. 12 years ago, we started LAB, Lancers Against Bullying. This PowerPoint initiative is revised annually and is intended to complement the strategies that schools currently must deal with, one of the most important issues in our schools today. When our student athletes deliver the message, it seems to resonate at a very different level for the audience. This presentation is one that I helped co-create with principals across the province. I spent the better part of one school year traveling around the province, teaching and training other administrations with the same presentation. With permission, we were able to lancerize it and utilize it locally. Unfortunately, bullying hasn't changed much over the years. Our second presentation is Lancers Shut Out Domestic Violence. This important presentation exposes the audience to how to define domestic violence and strategies are considered to prevent, intervene, and follow up if there are any signs of domestic violence in the family. This presentation was co-developed with the Hiatus House, an organization designed to create strategies around ending violence against women and their children in Windsor, Essex. Our third initiative is Skate Against Hate. 2021 was an eye-opener for many. We learned more intimately how the atrocities, about the atrocities that Indigenous communities throughout our country have been exposed to, and in particular, the horrendous residential schools where children are forced to attend. These schools were government and church operated and were designed to dehumanize the children and tore them away from their families. We learned of this unspeakable truth as we traveled to British Columbia, partnered with UNIFOR, First Nations Emergency Society, and the indigenous community of Nicola Valley to help rebuild homes in the aftermath of the fires and floods. Enjoy this video. However, the University of Windsor men's hockey team, in partnership with Unifor and the First Nations Emergency Services Society, has been in the Nicola Valley this week helping rebuild. They're also hosting a hockey camp for First Nations youth in the area.
this place, cold water, and then out in the corral, we're building the fence, you know, the one of their fences got washed away, and uh, we're building the corral there for the horses here, and then we're also uh, parcel, we're doing a shed there. So it's been uh, kind of a multi-facet multi uh, projects, but yeah, we're happy to be doing it. Having, having uh, a team, a whole hockey team, come and show up and have 25 guys out on uh, and doing a fencing corral project that would have taken a month uh, if we did it, uh, you know, as a, as a family even uh, and, and again a community uh, to have it done in just a couple of days was was just amazing to watch. I want people to know that, uh, you know, there's there's people around the country that truly do care ab about what's going on here, and and, and we want, if for a very short time, to offer some kind of relief to this community. find ways to educate um, our friends and family back home and every day and we hear things 
um, against indigenous people. We'll be able to stand up and we have learned a lot. I'd now like to call upon Anthony Stefano, uh, who is our coordinator of our social outreach initiatives, so he can explain his role. Steph. So hello everyone, my name is Anthony Stefano and I'm a second year education student. Uh, my role as a coordinator is to reach out to the local directors of education and get their stamp of approval uh, and then coordinate a schedule with the schools throughout Windsor Essex County. Um, for this, we have two members of our team and they go into the schools and they present the presentations that were previously discussed. Um, they tell me what presentation they're most interested in and I create a schedule for our players and the school to make that happen for them. Once our guys go into the schools and present, I will get feedback from the teacher and the principals and uh, share that with the players and Kevin. There are schools that are roughly 40 minutes away, so it's really important for our guys to have the means to travel there um, but it's also important to be on time and then get back and forth with their commitments with the team and uh, schooling. Uh, the players are also asked to present at least twice throughout the year, but most guys like to take on more of a responsibility and typically uh, this learning experience is expressed and felt through all. Uh, these presentations begin in November and typically don't end until we are done school in April. While in Merritt, BC, myself and Carson Hamlin delivered the programs to the Indigenous youth of Nicola Valley. It was an unbelievable experience and something that myself and our teammates will never forget. Thanks, Anthony. Now, I think these presentations are, are, are really important because sometimes, uh, as young adults, you know, we don't know what we don't know. And sometimes players find out what they like and what they don't like by going out and presenting. Uh, COVID has, has, has put a lot of strain on these, these programs uh, the last couple of years, but uh, we're hoping for a very normal uh, November as our uh, kickoff starts, so there'll be training involved, and uh, we're looking forward to getting out into the, uh, into the community soon. So thanks, Steph, for, for that. That's awesome. Student experience doesn't always have to be prompted by our team. It happens organically at Windsor, and whether you are a sport enthusiast, love the arts, or want to see your favorite band, the Windsor Detroit area is simply the best. I call upon Chad Sutherland, who is our Director of Sport Performance, to announce the 2022-23 the, uh, University of Windsor men's hockey team. Chad? of all the players up here. With the exception of the graduating class. Okay, well thanks so much. So I'll introduce our team. I'll tell you what faculty they're from and their previous uh, junior team. So, coming from the Moncton Wildcats, studying business, number one, Dakota Lund Cornish. Coming from the Trenton Golden Hawks, studying business, number four, Steph Dolbridge. Coming from Salmon Arm, studying liberal arts, Daniel Roberic. Coming from the Cornwall Royals, studying liberal arts, Aaron Shaw. From the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, studying liberal arts, Keegan McMullen. From the Weeks Crushers, studying business, Barrett Decision. From the Kitchener Rangers, studying human kinetics, Holden Whale. From Peterborough Peets, also studying human kinetics, Matt McNamara. From the Georgetown Raiders, studying business, number 22, Grant Spence. 
From the Leamington Flyers, studying education, number 25, Jaden Fetter. From the Amherst Ramblers, studying business, number 26, Robbie Burt. From the Wenatchee Wild, studying liberal arts, Matt Dorsey. From the Leamington Flyers, studying engineering, number 30, Ryan Polidori. From the Georgetown Raiders, studying criminology, number 31, Nathan Torchia. From the Chilliwack Chiefs, studying liberal arts, number 44, Jordan Chudley. From the Saginaw Spirit, studying law, number 47, Mason Cohn. From the Oshawa Generals, studying engineering, number 55, Will Ennis. From the Peterborough Pete, studying liberal arts, number 91, Brady Hins. And from the Quebec Ramparts, studying human kinetics, number 93, Hunter Holmes. So the following student athletes will be graduating this year. <laughs> from the Chilliwack Chiefs, a Masters in Human Kinetics, number five, Olivier Arsenal. From the LaSalle Vipers, studying business, number eight, Nick Pavia. From the Moncton Wildcats, studying business, number 11, Brady Pataki. From the Weyburn Red Wings, number 13, Sean Olson. From the LaSalle Viper, studying criminology, number 16, Spencer Paradise. From the Perry Colts, studying education, number 17, Anthony Stefano. <laughs> and from the Chatham Maroon, studying business, number 43, Nolan Gardner. Congratulations, guys. And a quick introduction to the staff. So we've already met head coach Kevin Hamlin, director of Off Ice, Craig Primack, <laughs> assistant coach Brett Belmore, <laughs> assistant coach Andrew Donaldson, Not here, but assistant coach Justin Buzio. <laughs> assistant coach Carson Hamlin. <laughs> Strength conditioning coach Joey Garland. <laughs> Equipment manager Jeff Madison. <laughs> Student manager Tyler Rolliner. Student therapist, Josh Cooley. <laughs> Student therapist, James Nicholas. <laughs> and mental performance coach, Dr. Todd Lahey. That's the group, thanks a lot.
Thanks, Chad. Thanks, everybody. So clearly, our program would look very different without, uh, without many people stepping up to sponsor our program. And uh, somebody is here today, a very special person, they're all special, but uh, when we first did a presentation for this uh, gentleman, it was, uh, it was extraordinarily received um, by not only him, but uh, people in his local. And I, I have to tell you that, uh, Dave, from, from all of our guys, like you, you really have no idea the lives that you're changing and the impact that Local 444 has had on, on our, our student athletes. So I know it was National that, uh, that sponsored us to go to um, BC, but if not for your involvement, it just, it just wouldn't happen. So on behalf of the University of Windsor, on behalf of Dr. Rohr, and uh, Stephanie White, who's not here, and certainly all of our players and our, and our coaching staff, please accept a, heart well, or a heartfelt thank you uh, on behalf of our organization. Would you please come up? Thanks, Dave. Get back to playing weight for that. <laughs> <laughs> you made a comment, eh, Peter? Well, Kevin, thank you so much. This is, uh, I'm just the face of the local. I mean, without the vehicles we build, the casino, the honor that I have every day to represent the membership, I mean, this wouldn't happen. And uh, we can continue this as long as we, this is my plug for the Pacifica, the electric vehicle, and you know, if you guys want to buy Chryslers, Get out there and buy them. Captain, right? We had this discussion right on. But anyways, it, when, Kevin, when Kevin and Greg came to us, it, when you know you talk about the different programs that the players are involved with, we just jumped on board right away. Uh, excited. You know, Kevin always says to us, you know, we're trying to build champions on the ice and off the ice. And that was so important to us. And, and what you stand for. So keep up the great work. Continue doing what you're doing, and all the best to every one of you in your future. Thank you so much. Thanks, Cass. Uh, somebody who couldn't be here tonight is a gentleman named Stuart Timjuk. Uh, Stuart is a co-owner of Dynamix, Inc. He, he is a chemical manufacturer and has a passion for the game of hockey. Uh, he is intimately connected to uh, the city of Windsor. Uh, he loves hockey and still plays as a goaltender. Uh, Stuart and his wife are on vacation right now, so uh, he could not be here tonight, but he sends his uh, regards. He told us that uh, he would be uh, checking in through We Digital, so we hope that uh, Stuart and his wife are enjoying a, a beautiful vacation. But thank you, Stuart, and, and uh, the alumni like Stuart who so generously give of their, uh, of their time and, and their resources. Um, I'd like to call upon Will Ennis now to introduce another friend of the program. Will? Thank you. Um, to start off, I'd like to thank all the sponsors here and watching uh, for all your support. Uh, it means the world to this program and, uh, and the team. Um, I'd like to personally thank uh, Del Dudo, uh, Gary Quinville, and the Amico Corporation for all their support and funding. Um, our team would not be where it is now without uh, you guys. Um, but I'd like to especially thank Dale and Gary for uh, the job opportunities they give to our team. And I want me being one of them, um, I can tell you that uh, it was an amazing learning experience and it opened many doors and uh, we're very grateful for that. Um, so on behalf of the Windsor Lancers, I'd like to call up Dale Duo uh, to give out a token of our uh, appreciation. Captain with our program. 
Uh, he is the recipient of the Mellow Family Bursary, and I call upon guards to talk about it. Nolan? First of all, uh, I just want to thank all our sponsors and supporters that are here and uh, tuning in virtually tonight. I'd like to take this time to thank Mr. and Mrs. Mello for thinking of our program and helping our players, especially not with uh, struggling financially. Uh, your generosity makes it easier for us to pursue success in both education and athletics. Uh, it helps our program in a number of ways and we couldn't do it without you guys, so thank you very much. Thanks, Gertz. I think I'd be remiss tonight if I didn't uh, give a shout out to Jimmy Watt. Uh, last but certainly not least, uh, Water is a it was a great former Lancer, and, and Jim is tuning in online from his office in Edmonton, Alberta. He's a, uh, Jim is a senior admin and advisor of the National Bank Financial. Uh, he was a star player with the Lancers and represented Canada at the PCU Games. Jim sponsored our golf tournament this uh, this year and made it down to Windsor to, to uh, share in the day. Thanks, Jim, for your contributions, but most importantly, thank you for staying connected to our program. We know that you'll be cheering on the boys from Western Canada, and we appreciate everything you do for us. Um, another gentleman who uh, has stayed connected to the program as a very important alumni is Mr. Peter Dobridge, and I'd like to uh, thank Pete uh, for being here tonight, but most importantly, always being there when uh, when I have a when I have a question or two, uh, Pete has a tremendous uh, perspective. Not only is he a, a fabulous alumni, but he's uh, an extraordinary business person as well. So he is uh, he is always there to offer uh, any kind of advice and, and tips that that we need uh, off the ice as well as on the ice. So Pete, thanks for uh, always being available. It's difficult to mention all those uh, intimately involved with the program like ours on a daily basis because there are so many at Athletics and Recreation. Uh, but someone I know who tries to sell our game every single day is Mona Sleeman. So uh, she coordinates everything from the band at our games uh, to the uh, busing international students and everything in between. So Mona, I know you're watching tonight. Thank you uh, for being here tonight, or for uh, being available tonight online and uh, thank you for all you do. And now to our, to our guest. Each year we want to recognize an alumni who has carried on the Lancer values to their journey that far transcends the game of hockey. I have the distinct honor to introduce a man that has meant so much to so many and will forever be connected to this program. In the early 80s, Jim Weiss wore the blue and gold and tonight we have the pleasure of welcoming Jim back to Windsor. It's not the dressing room at 80 Knox, Jim, but it's the next best thing. Dr. Jim Weiss teaches, consults, conducts research, and delivers speeches on the topic of leadership. He is heralded as a transformational academic leader and a leading authority in the area who has engaged audiences across many sectors on the power of people and the merits of a team approach to leadership. His 5C leader concept and is heralded the 5C leader, Exceptional Leadership's Practices for Extraordinary Times, book serve as a foundation to his approach to leadership. Jim has served in a number of senior leadership positions during his career. He recently complete, completed a second stint as the VP International at Western University and currently serves as the founding executive director of the Western Leadership Academy. Jim has earned a number of prestigious academic and leadership awards throughout his distinguished career, including the top teaching, research, and leadership awards from his profession. The Queen's Jubilee, medaled by the Government of Canada in 2002 for his academic leadership, and 10 years later, the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal in recognition for his leadership and advocacy for exercise and physical activity. The North American Society for Sports Management awarded him a research fellowship as well as the prestigious Dr. Earl F. Ziegler Award in 2001, the Dr. Gar Garth Patton Distinguished Service Award in 2015, and the Distinguished Sports Management Educator Award in 2022. 
In 2010, Dr. Weiss worked with the men's and women's Olympic hockey teams at the Winter Olympic Games in, in Vancouver, Canada in 2014. In 2014, the University of Windsor inducted Jim into its Sports Hall of Fame. And in November of 2022, will award him the prestigious Alumni Award of Merit and Honor. I am so pleased that we have the opportunity to introduce Jim this evening on a stage that he helped lay a foundation for. Jim never misses an opportunity to say hello, whether we're beating Western 4-2 and he comes down to the coach's room, or he repeatedly comes to our golf tournaments. He is an active alumni. And for that, Jim, we're extremely grateful and thankful. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome home Dr. Jim Weiss. Thank you very much, Kevin. Those talks that we have down at Western, uh, I go in the dressing room, see Gummer and Kevin between periods, and I say, Kev, pull your goalie for God's sakes. And he said, but we're up three nothing. You want me to pull our goalie? You know, it's, uh, I, it's just a great honor to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I'm truly, truly honored. Believe me, I took far more from this program than I ever gave. Uh, I played five years, was an assistant coach for two years, and uh, a proud member of the alumni. Uh, today, I was teaching before I came here, so I had to leave for London uh, quickly. So I had to wear this suit and this pin all day. Believe me, it took, I, it, I got lots of looks from the, uh, from the Western students with this uh, Lancer pin on, but I wear it proudly, and I'm very, very pleased to be here. Kevin, uh, Kevin and I go way back. Gummer and I go way back. Uh, we used to play the Windsor Royals when Gummer played. He scared the hell out of me back then, and he scares me today, actually, to be, be truthful. And Kevin, of course, uh, Kevin uh, had a distinguished junior career, and then he had a pro shot, and he was going to play with the Lancers. After my fifth year, I was an assistant coach, and because I didn't know what I was doing, the head coach put me down in the corner to shoot on the goalies and Kevin was one of those goalies. I like to say I used to school him down in those corner rinks uh, or corner nets. He probably has another story and I'm sure his is more accurate than mine. Kevin, uh, I want to say on behalf of the alumni and to you and your staff, and believe me, your organization is starting to look like General Motors for God's sakes, all of the, the people that you have, but you are doing a great job at building a very strong program. And I have every confidence that you're going to continue to build this program into a national championship team. However, what impresses me the most is how you and your staff have enriched the educational preparation of these fine young men and their experience. Some of the work that they're doing in social activism, uh, some of the things that they're doing to help those in need and uh, those less fortunate is far more important and I, am, I know I speak for the alumni in saying just how proud we are of you and how proud we are of you and your staff, Kevin, for all of the work that you put into those enrichment programs. Our purpose at a university in an athletics program is to build leaders. It's to build great, in this case, men, great husbands, and great fathers of the future. And I know, Kevin, you and your, t and your staff are doing a great job in that regard. I want to uh, tell you that I've really enjoyed, just when Kevin called me and offered me this opportunity, it gave me a chance to really reflect on the experience. You know, I thought of my coaches, and I had three of them. Uh, Dr. C. Eves, who was like a father figure to me, um, and, and still is to this day. Uh, I, he was my first two years. My uh, third year was a fellow by the name of Ken Tyler, who went on to coach McGill University, where he coached Mike Babcock, actually, and a number of other uh, NHL coaches actually that came out of that program and he is now over in Austria. He coached over there for a number of years. And Bob Corrin. And Bob Corrin was uh, my coach for two years and then I coached with Bob for two years. He went on to become an athletic director at the University of Calgary, the University of Minnesota Duluth, and at Vermont, uh, University of Vermont. And he's been a real career mentor and, and advocate for me. 
I keep in touch with, uh, with them and uh, look forward to every opportunity to, to see them. They've meant so much to me. You know, the experience as a Lancer hockey player changed my life. There's no question about it. It gave me the confidence, it gave me the skills, it gave me the contacts, it gave me all the platforms to build from. I have friends for life uh, who are former Lancer hockey players. You may not know it, but your best friend in life is sitting in this room. That person will be the person that stands in your wedding. That person will be there for you in good times and bad. That person will be there for you and, and be connected with you all throughout the, the rest of your life. And like you, or like me, 40 years after your last game, three people from this team will be joining you and you'll be taking on all of the young players at the uh, Lancer Golf Alumni Tournament and trying to win, as we do. I can assure you that uh, your, your great friendships are forged uh, through, this experiences, through this experience. Now I'd like to leave you with six pieces of advice. You can do whatever you want with them. You can ignore every one of them or you can uh, uh, reflect on them and, and put them into practice. But I've been thinking about these, uh, uh, these uh, pieces of advice and what I've taken from the Lancer program. And if I could go back 40 years and do it all over again, I guess it'd be 45 years and, and, and do it all over again, get myself a set of Cooperalls and a wooden stick like we have up here, I wish I, I would have, have had someone share this advice with me. But you can do what you want with it. First and foremost, we just saw seven graduating players. To the rookies on the team who will play their first league game this, this weekend, talk to them. And they will tell you how fast this experience will go. It will go in a blink of an eye. You're, you're playing your first league game, and before you know it, you'll be uh, waiting for, and, and for your last shift in your last, in your fifth year. It will go very fast. And the advice I give you is, you have to take every opportunity, give 100% in everything you do, your training, your nutrition, your game preparation, every shift. Uh, what you take from the classroom as well, this experience will go by in the blink of an eye. And recognize as well, and I know a program of this caliber, you work your way into the lineup in many cases. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. I was actually cut my first year, and I had to go back and train and train and train and come back in, in, in much better shape and uh, that was a great life lesson for me and I've used that for other areas in my life as well. I hate to see this, uh, say this in the presence of the Dean of the Faculty of Human Kinetics, but uh, that's a, that was a role that I once held as well, but I was on probation my first year as well. And I used to bring students into my office who were on probation and I would talk to them about it. And I would say, you know, every class every day sit in the first three rows, what you do, the, you know, your, these four years will dictate what you do the next 40. And then they would get up and they would leave my, uh, to leave the office and the dean's office and they'd put their hand on the doorknob and I'd say, oh, one more thing. And they'd turn back and I'd say, welcome to the club. I was on probation as well. You can get off of it. So I can only imagine they would go home that uh, weekend and say, you know, I'm on probation, but don't worry, I'm going to be the dean of this place in, in, a, in no time. It will go fast, believe me. And again, I, I was cut my first year, ended up one of our team captains. I, I was on probation for my first term and ended up being the dean of the faculty. So it's not where you start, it's where you finish and what you put into those opportunities. Lesson number two, recognize the value and the privilege it is to be a Lancer varsity athlete. You know, much like your legacy night, uh, I had a graduate student a few years ago that uh, did a, a study on leader development and how playing basketball well in, you know, when they were 20 helped shape their life and career. And uh, this person went out and interviewed athlete, or former athletes, uh, basketball players, men and women, who are now at retirement age, and got them to reflect on it. And it, the conversation started slow in all cases, but after a while they started to think about what it really meant to them and how uh, the experience helped shape them in teamwork and perseverance and things that, that really helped uh, advance their careers and enrich their lives. So one of the things, uh, one of his recommendations was to actually have a legacy night. So Kevin, that, uh, that's very consistent with the literature because we don't think about those things. 
But the leader's development research is, is crystal clear. Opportunities like this are incredible platforms to develop leadership skills. The key is, of course, to reflect, to watch, keep your eyes open, see the things that are happening, learn from the very best leaders. I can still think of some of the hockey players I played with who were incredible leaders who helped shape some of my practices. I naturally wanted to bring my own um, uh, practices to the, to the forefront, but I could learn from others by just reflecting on what they were doing. So recognize that this is a leadership development opportunity for you. Lesson number three, recognize the value of team sports, especially hockey, where you battle together, you push each other to be better, you support each other, and in doing so, you become friends for life and real advocates with great respect for one another. The great teams encourage, inspire, they'll get in the grills of, of players when it's necessary and appropriate, but uh, it's all done in a reason and in a way to really bring out the very best in people. Lesson number four, know that you have visibility and profile. Every decision you make, everywhere you go, you take with you the great name of this program and the great name of the University of Windsor. So keep that in mind. And uh, again, the way you dress, the way you act, the way you, you advocate for others, the way you carry yourself, those are all things that you don't, may not know it at the time, but people your students, fellow students, student athletes, look to you for leadership and example. And I know Kevin and his staff look for you as well to do those things. Number five, be leaders. Be leaders, strive to be leaders. You know, it's been said, to think about the way that you wanna be perceived, act that way, and you will be that person. So to be a leader, you have to first of all, act like a leader. Uh, with the Lancer Athletics Program, on your team, at the university, in your families, in your communities, and uh, in your careers. We need leaders in all walks of life. And you will be amazed at the leadership skills that you have developed from your sport experience and how transferable they are to so many areas of your life. These skills are honed and tempered through your experiences and through your struggles as a Lancer hockey player and they will serve you well. Do not waste them. And finally, uh, I am an academic and I should have some academic uh, component to this as well. Enjoy and benefit from the educational opportunities that are afforded you as a University of Windsor student. This is a great university with lots of great, great programs. And you know, I think it's cool to be smart now. Maybe in another era it wasn't. It is Kevin, I, I loved how you emphasized the academic all Canadians uh, and how important that is. So excel academically, squeeze this program for everything that it can in terms of your academic um, um, su success. Recognize that what you do over the next four years will indeed determine what you do for the next 40. So every class every day, sit in the first three rows when you're working on, on, on group projects, work with the kids that are serious about school. If they're your friends, great. If, they're, if your friends are, have another approach, catch up with them later. But work with students that are serious about school and you be serious about it. Be, be a role model in that area. And in my case, my, my uh, wonderful wife, Sherry, who couldn't be here tonight, she just had some uh, surgery and, and, there, and was unable to make it. But she was a gold medalist, and uh, we started dating in my second year, or my third year. And if I wanted to see her, I had to go to the library. And that was a really uh, helpful thing for me as well. But, uh, you know, the school opportunities and the opportunities to, to learn across many different academic areas, take advantage of those. So let me recap. You know, as, as noted, Lancer Hockey changed my life. These lessons I have learned, some of them the hard way, some of them upon reflection, and I've shared them with you tonight with hopes that they'll mean, be meaningful for you. Let me recap, it goes fast, squeeze every moment, enjoy it, but recognize it goes fast. Number two, this uh, experience that you have as a Lancer, or Lancer hockey player, recognize it's far more than scoring and preventing goals. It's about leadership development, it's preparing you for the future and it will prepare you well. 
I know you're going to be successful in your season, but keep the long game in mind as well. Number three, uh, life like hockey is a team sport. You'll be challenged, but your experience as a, as a hockey player will serve you well. And I know from talking with corporate recruiters, they love athletes. And uh, they do that for a reason, because they know you're about perseverance, dedication, commitment, seeing things through in your team players. So th that will serve you well. Number four, being a varsity athlete is a privilege, an opportunity and responsibility. Take both roles seriously. It's an honor and a springboard. You've earned it, now take advantage of it. And number, uh, number five, be leaders on your team, in your program, at the university, in your community, and in your families. Uh, we need you leaders of the future. You are our leaders of the future. Number six, enjoy and benefit from the great educational experiences and opportunities that this institution provides you. It's a great privilege, and it goes by fast. I hope you have found these insights to be helpful. I thank you, Kevin, uh, and, and staff for this opportunity. I look forward to seeing you when you come down the highway to that other university. Uh, it's been a pleasure joining you tonight. I only ask for one favor in return for, for driving down here and giving this talk, and that is, go easy on my Mustangs. <laughs> thank you very much. Good luck to all of you. On behalf of our organization, the players, the coaching staff, we really want to thank you, uh, Dr. Jim Weiss, for your contributions and um, your advice you've given us. It's definitely a privilege to be a Lancer, and uh, I know that our team's going to put in a great effort this year, so I just want to thank you and his alumni, the donors, and thank you so much for your support this, uh, this year, and always, it's you know, such a privilege and an honor. So thanks very much. We look forward to seeing you guys at the rink. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Again, this, uh, this concludes uh, the evening. I think there's some snacks back there that uh, uh, Greg has for, uh, for everybody, so please feel free to, uh, to enjoy those. Um, another special night. Uh, these nights are, are, uh, are, are becoming more special, and I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, thank Todd Lougheed for, uh, for this idea a couple years ago and, and uh, just, just sitting around and, and trying to think about how we can celebrate uh, the current team, uh, past teams, and, and how uh, we can mix in the future. So thanks, Todd, for that. You've been a, a great asset to the program. Thanks, everybody, for, uh, for coming. We look forward to, I know the players will be there, but we look forward to seeing you uh, this weekend where we play, uh, uh, we're host to uh, uh, Thunder Bay, Lakehead Thunderwolves, and uh, we look forward to some exciting U Sport hockey. Thanks, everybody, and good night. Thank you.